Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to walk through the Manjaro Architect installer. And uh, this is a specific installer. It is not for the beginner. So if you've heard me say, you know, Manjaro might be one to try out for a beginner, if particularly if you need Arch and you're more of a Linux beginner, Manjaro is generally pretty good. Um, but uh, with that, uh, this one is not an example of a beginner one because we're going to be basically installing this through a terminal command. But the architect, though, gives you the ability to basically install your system from the ground up from nothing. It's kind of more like almost a true arch type install, but uh, with a little bit more guided help to it. So we're going to go ahead and get a working Manjaro with this video. So all I've done here is I've created a virtual machine that is set up to use 64-bit Arch. And uh, I have booted this download, which is, I think it's 617 megabytes, so it's fairly small. So we're here on the startup screen where you can choose your time zone, your keyboards, your language, your drivers. So of course this is if you're running like NVIDIA and you need non-free drivers, you can go ahead and change that. Um, we do not need to change any of those. So you can see here we can go with free or non-free drivers. We're just going to go ahead and keep it this way it was. And now we're going to go ahead and boot into the architect. And so this is going to give us to a command prompt that is not even logged in. But the good news is they're going to give us the username and the password on the start screen and tell us exactly how to get started with setup. So as soon as it finishes its boot sequence, which will be just a moment, it's going to tell us that the username and the password are both Manjaro. And as soon as we land on it, we want to log in and then type setup. So here we are. So let's go ahead and type in Manjaro and Manjaro. And now we have our command prompt there. So let's go ahead and hit setup. So this is just going to go ahead and download all of our different packages and things that we need. So the major advantage of doing this is it's going to have everything completely up to date immediately as soon as you boot from this. All right, so the first thing is we want to select our language. And uh, since I know only English, you know, I don't see like Koine Greek. So let's just go ahead and do English there. And so it's going to check all of our passes. And then this is just a screen giving us the basic information, menu options, you know, up, down, left, right, you know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start, you know. Uh, but anyway, just use your up and down care, uh, arrows. You can use your tab to go back and forth, your space bar to select things. Just your basic how to use an installer on a terminal. So we'll go ahead and come in and first uh, we have the steps, prepare the installation, install the desktop system, CLI system, custom system, system rescue, and done. Let's go ahead and start with the preparation. So the preparation, uh, set the virtual console. All right, so this is our key map. We are going to be good with that. Listing devices, this is just going to list the disks. We should only have SDA1 in here because I have a single disk on this virtual machine. So the next is we need to partition our disks. So we're just going to pick whichever disk. So if you have multiple disks, you can choose which ones. Again, I only have a single one on here. So obviously that's the one we're going to do. We can securely wipe it, which is going to fill the disk with zeros, uh, secure the data. I do not need to do that. We can do automatic partitioning or we can do a variety of, you know, F disk, G disk, uh, parted, all these things. Where possible, I just generally like to do automatic partitioning. And so here it's going to create the, um, the root partition and then it's going to create the other amount. And then if you want to use uh, swap, you want to select this slap, the swap file when mounting. So yes, we're going to go ahead and continue. And the next step is RAID. This is if you're going to have um, either multiple disks or multiple partitions syncing each other. Uh, you can do that. We're not going to do anything with that. Logical volume management, of course, this is this will automatically um, uh, manage your volume size of your disk um, automatically instead of anything else. We're not going to mess with that. And the Lux encryption, if you would like to encrypt your disk, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do any of these extra steps. 
So ZFS is also optional. We don't need to mess with that one. Mounting our partitions. All right, so we want to figure out where we want to mount. So the first one is our boot partition. This is not the one we want to mount. We want to mount this, the bigger one here. This is the one that's going to have all of the information on it. And then here we have to decide what uh, way we would like to mount it. And so we can do do not format or a variety of different things. There's NTFS for Windows type stuff, VVAD, XF, uh, XFS. Uh, the best, most recommended, particularly if you're new to Linux, is the EXT4. So go ahead and probably do that one unless you know what the other ones are and know for sure you would like to use them. So mounting this is going to erase all of the data. Yes, we are okay with that. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we can use the spacebar to select and deselect the desired mount options. So we do not actually need to change any of these. This might be if you needed to, uh, if you needed to mount something for maybe a boot partition, something like that, you can do that. We're okay with what we are, confirming the amounts, and we are successful. All right, so select the swap partition. We can either go with none or we can go with a swap file. Uh, one of the two. So if you're going to be suspending your computer, things like that, go ahead and use the swap file. I never worry about suspending the computer, so I'm just going to say none. And then select the additional partitions, and we're just going to say done. Uh, we don't want to mess with that 512. That's actually a boot partition, so we're not going to mess with any of that. All right, so configure the installer mirror lists. This is where you can edit your configurations. So this is going to boot up. I believe it boots up in uh, Nano. And uh, we can edit any of our configuration files for the mirrors, the configurations, uh, ranking mirrors by speed. Um, I'm going to just assume for the purpose of this that everything is going to be working right as in my test system, everything was. So we're not going to get into manually configuring anything there right now. There's refresh Pac-Man keys, choose Pac-Man cache. These are all things we can do. So refreshing our keys is going to update any of the mirror keys that we have. Um, choosing the Pac-Man cache. Do you want to use the cache instead of the installation? This can reduce the size of the required downloads in the installation. So yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Enable the hook so we can do this or not do this. This is going to um, FS check disk hook. We're not going to worry about that one. And we are going back. So installing the desktop system. So now we are actually going to be installing all the different things. Installing the desktop, the bootloader, the base, system tweaks, configuration files, things like that. So let's go ahead and start with the Manjaro desktop. So it's going to ask us what we would like to use as our kernel first. And so if we want to get really adventurous, we can do the absolute latest 5.4. I'm going to do the 5.3. Um, I did a I did a couple tests on this. My 5.3 for sure worked. My 5.4 did not. I think I missed another setting somewhere. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to use 5.3 as the kernel. So enter this. And now we want to select the desktop environment. So you can see that we do not have every single desktop environment in the world, but we do have a large number of them. GNOME, KDE, XFCE, Awesome, BS Palm, uh, Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, i3, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, OpenBox, and WebDAD. Let's go ahead and go with Budgie today. Uh, we can only install one, so unfortunately uh, this is not like Debian where we can install multiple desktops. Uh, and these are configured desktops. I believe you can install the other ones as well if you wanted to, but it's only going to start with one that is configured. And that's with this screen here. And let you add additional installation packages. So here, there are a lot of different packages we could choose from. So for example, if I want to install something like Thunderbird, uh, you can see here I have Thunderbird as an option there. So if I say, um, yes, we're going to install that. Now I can install multiple things just by uh, hitting the space and adding extra things. So this is going to install my basic. Now, do I want it to do the full or the minimal? Uh, so the full, of course, we're going to have different applications in there versus the minimal we are not. So let's go ahead and choose the minimal for the case of this video, just to save the time in the recording. 
All right, so uh, this guy here, it's gonna show what it's gonna be installing. Control X will close us out, and now it's going to be actually doing its thing. So this one here is gonna take um, a few extra steps. It's gonna take some time. We're downloading the packages, and then we are going to install the packages. So this might take about five or so minutes. You can see it is downloading a, almost a gig, and it's gonna be installing about four gigs of data. And so we're going to go ahead and pause the video and come back when this is done doing its thing. Okay, so the installation is now done. And so now we're landing on the screen. We want to auto install free drivers, auto install proprietary drivers, select a display driver, or install all free drivers. So we're going to go ahead and auto install free drivers. Now your difference here is your... Your auto install is going to install the drivers for the things that the system finds. Proprietary will install the proprietary drivers. If you're running AMD like I do, you want to just use the free drivers. If you're running NVIDIA, you probably want to do the proprietary drivers. We can select the display drivers. Uh, or we can install everything. If you just auto install the free drivers, then the system may not be as portable. So if I'm installing this onto a external drive and I install it on this, this computer and pull it out and plug it in somewhere else, it may not work as well. So if you are looking for portability, you're probably gonna wanna auto install, like uh, install all free drivers. But here we're just gonna do just this one because it's going to be specific to this particular machine. So there you go, it automatically, or it successfully installed the video drivers for my virtual box. Hit enter to continue. Now we want to install a bootloader. So we can do grub or OS prompt, uh, prober. So grub is going to install grub and just put in the, um, the installation for this one operating system. If you were to be sideloading this onto another disk, then you're going to want to use... Um, you're going to want to use Grub and the OS Prober, and that way your Grub is going to populate with the other operating systems that are already on the disk. So we're just going to do Grub in this case here. Now we want to choose where we are putting it, which is going to be on that spot there as well. Now, once again, this is going to take not too long, this one. This one will be just a few seconds. So let's go ahead and see what it's doing. So it's getting grub running it's doing all the other things all right now we're going to configure our base so generate nifstab file uh, this is for external mounting drives i don't really think i need to run an fstab file setting our host name is just what is this computer going to say on the network manjaro is just fine uh, system locale this is your time zone setting it's going to go ahead and use that and then desktop uh, Woo, I missed that one. Uh, keyboard layout, so we're going to use US layout. And set time zone. Just typing the first letter of the things we want to get to. Setting time zone in New York? Yes, we are. And this one here, it doesn't matter um, in this case because it's the only operating system. If you're competing with a Windows system, you might want to use local time here uh, instead of UTC because Windows systems use local time. This is what causes a dual boot computer to sometimes jump back and forth between times if you're truly jumping back and forth between operating systems. So oh, I, whatever I picked, it didn't matter in this case. Set root password. So we're going to enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And then adding a new user, I'm going to call it Manjaro. And we can choose what we would like to use as our default shell. I'm just going to use bash and enter our password, which is definitely not 123. Now we're creating the user groups and settings. And once we are done with that, let's go back. If there's any system tweaks, enabling automatic login, you can turn on or turn off this, enable hibernation, which I do not want hibernation, particularly since I believe I did not set a swap file. That will certainly cause your computer to have problems. There's performance, security, system D tweaks. I'm not going to mess with any of that. All right, so we've configured our base, system tweaks. We can review our configuration files. Uh, we can chroot into our installation if we want to do any um, terminal tweaking back from there but I do not believe we need to do any of that. So install CL system, so install base packaging. I think we're all done here. Uh, this is, uh, we just needed the desktop system. We didn't need the CLI system. Um, there's custom systems. I think we're done. Hopefully uh, we are gonna be good. So let's go ahead and 
do this, would you like to save the installation log? Nah, not in this case. All right, so now let's go ahead and just reboot our system, and hopefully we will boot into Manjaro Budgie. Okay, so it looks like it's definitely booting up something here. I did end up shutting it down and uh, pulling the disk out of there and just rebooting off of the hard drive itself. Uh, we landed on this blank screen that just kind of stayed as a blank screen. And uh, that was not what we were looking for. So here we are onto our login screen here. So here's Manjaro. We can see that it did install GNOME in there as well. That's I believe that might actually be because um, GNOME is a requirement for Budgie. So let's go ahead and just log in with my super secret password that is definitely not 123 and get logged in here and this should load up this should load us into budgie so here we are we have manjaro budgie installed we installed a minimal system which should have kind of a minimal amount of packages just some basic um there's manjaro application some basic system tools nothing much there's thunderbird which we set Hexchat installed, nothing installed under our office, uh, system tools, sound and video. So you can see we have just the basic system utilities that would come from our system. Let's go ahead and have a look at our system monitor, see how this guy looks from here. And it looks like it's still doing some basic boot up stuff, but we're running uh, Budgie on about 850 megabytes right now. So that's actually pretty good. So here's our welcome to Manjaro startup screen. We're going to toggle that off and let's go ahead and have a look at what we have. Let's have our basic setup here. Um, Budgie's looking good. And we have you know, a widget uh, launch. There's Papyrus desktop icons, notification panels. We can do dark theme, light theme, animations, various fonts. And then, of course, it does say that there is some language packs available, which we don't need to mess with any of the language packs at this point. But we are pretty good. Let me see if, uh, see if that cursor stops spinning. It's like it's trying to do something in the background. I'm not sure what it is, but we're trying to do something in the background. All right. Here is our system is up to date. So we actually started up to date. Here is all the different things that we have. So we can have different tools we can install right here, and there are different categories. So if you wanted to install anything, uh, the uh, PAMAC here is looking good. There are no updates. It says system is up to date. So there we are. There we started with our architect, and inside of our architect, we now have a fully running budgie system. So that is how to use the architect. Hopefully that helps you out. Let me know your thoughts. Have you used the architect either on this or on some other system before? Let us know in the comments down below.